Good morning, church. Oh, it is so good to see people in the house, real people. Uh, you're not digital. This is awesome. Uh, church Online, we are so glad that you are here with us, that you chose to uh, be a part of this service, this Father's Day. Um, dads, hopefully you're enjoying uh, maybe a delicious breakfast right now, brunch, whatever that might be. Uh, or maybe you're already out on the boat, and because we're doing live service, you've got it streaming out there too. That's cool. Wherever you're doing church, uh, we're happy and we are glad that you uh, are here in the building with us today. Again, my name is Anthony Quinteri, one of the pastors here, and um, I'm honored to be able to come and give uh, Father's Day message again. Uh, I think it was last year and maybe even the year before, just the way that the timings worked out. Um, but I love uh, the way God works, and uh, being a father uh, is definitely um, one of the things, if not the thing, I wanted to be when I grew up. So, you know, you ask kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? My answer was typically a dad. Like, I was excited to have a family and kids and, um, and all that kind of stuff. And so I've been blessed with that. Uh, Jennifer, will you uh, put my, my family up there for me? So there's my fam. <clears throat> look how young I look. Holy cow. Uh, we got my kids, my beautiful wife, Catherine, in the top there, Paul and Caroline, my little fishing buddy there, some old pictures. Um, over on the right side, my, my grandfather, old Grandpa Vito. Uh, man, what a, what a great guy. What an awesome uh, just father figure and role, role model in my life. Uh, just his love for Jesus was amazing, amazing. Love my kids. Jennifer, you can go on to the next slide there. Um, a little more recent now. Um, definitely look a little older. Definitely more beardy. Um, but here's our, our quarantine life. Anybody recognize, anybody, anybody else in here experience that? You know, waking up early in the morning. We got kids doing digital school. Anybody, who's, who's excited to be done with the digital schoolwork? Yeah, lots of parents in the house. I'm sure you at home are over, we're over it. And Summer's here, says it him, himself. He says, teacher. Um, so this is somebody asking Jesus, teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. But what I love that Jesus did is he made it very clear as we go back in these verses, right? The first thing, before we can really love each other, before we can care even for our spouse, our husband, our wife, or our children, uh, or the people, dream team, who, who are walking through our parking lot and coming into our doors, the first thing, it starts with loving God with all of our heart. Right? We've got to give him all of it. Not some of it. Not our Sunday morning hearts. Not our Sunday morning and our weekly life group hearts. But all of it. That is what God is after. Right, And so uh, as we think about doing this well and, and being in relationships, um, Paul continues on in Galatians uh, chapter 5, verse 16 through 21. Uh, on the screen here, we have verse 18, but I'm going to start in 16. It says, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, now we're here on the screen again, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Right, I love how Paul, he finally just realized, like, I just had to stop this list. It's going to go on forever. And so he just kind of wraps it up, sins like these. And so what I, what I want us to see is that, that there is this battle going on inside of us, right? Nobody wakes up in the morning with a to-do list that I'm going to harm the relationships of the people in my life. That is not our intention. There might be some people out there, but I would say for most of us, right, our desire when we wake up is to love our wives, 
to love our husbands, to love our children, right? To at least try to do those things. So why then, why then don't we do it, right? I talked about my, my children. Uh, both of them just had birthdays in the last couple weeks. Um, Paul turned 11, and he just entered um, our youth group. So now I am his youth pastor, which is like blowing my mind, like just how old I'm getting, he's getting. Uh, Caroline just turned nine on Monday, and so my kids are growing up, and, and it is awesome. Um, but Paul, uh, he and I, you know, I think there's just something between a father and a son, and I see it over here, right? That is awesome, right? A father and a son, just the love that's there, it, it's unique, right? And the love between a father and a daughter is unique, but for me and my son, like, I mean, he's my right-hand man. You know, we fish, we go to the beach, we play video games. That's been a lot of fun that he's in middle school, right? We're gamers. We, we love it. But we do a lot of things together. And so, like, of anybody in the world besides my wife, you know, he's one of the, the last people that I would ever want to treat poorly, to upset. Yet, when we are working shoulder to shoulder, we're building a fence at the house right now, and he's getting to use his own drill, and, and he's got his own screws, and you know, he's doing the thing. Like, this is awesome. Like, that proud dad moment. Yet, there's a switch in me that will flip and how quickly I get frustrated. Paul, that screw didn't go in the right place. You missed the board. And then, and then, and then I go back again like, this is like going to be, he's my, one of my best friends. This is my best bud. What, what is going on? And, and Paul makes it very clear that there is a struggle inside all of us that no matter how great we want to treat people, no matter how much we want to love our children, our spouses, even strangers, right? We want it, people do nice things for strangers all the time, right? Even though we have those desires, there is this desire inside of us that is not from God, and it is to serve ourselves. And so my first point is that when we think about relationships, when we think about being with people, oftentimes the problem is we make it about us. <clears throat> we make these relationships about us, right? What am I going to get out of this, right? If I serve this person, I bet they'll take care of me. Catherine and I kind of have this uh, spoken, unspoken rule, uh, my wife and I, um, that whoever cooks doesn't have to do the dishes, right? Just a simple thing in our house. But I'll find myself selfishly, and I love cooking anyways, but like I'm going to make sure I do the cooking because I do not want to have to do the dishes. Not because it's something that we've mutually agreed upon, just because like I want to get something out of this relationship. And I have to find like, in my heart, like, man, like, there is brokenness in there. Like That is not the attitude I should be going into this with. It's nice that she's offered to, you know, that we do this together, but I should cook and do the dishes. And on occasion, I won't say that I do it all the time, Catherine, you know that, but on occasion, I'll do both of them, or she will do both of them often. She does a lot better job at it than I do. But there's this broken, brokenness in us because we make it about ourselves. Jesus says this in Mark chapter 7, for from within, out of a person's heart, come evil thoughts, Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, eagerness for lustful pleasure, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these vile things come from within. They are what defile you and make you unacceptable to God. So as we, as we look at this list that, that Jesus is talking about, these things that, that can come from our hearts, for me, I can look at this list and, you know, make my way pretty, a pretty good ways through it and think, no, oh, that's not really me. No, nah, that, that's not really me. But man, the moment Paul says foolishness, I'm like, yeah, that's me. That's mine right there. I'll, I'll own that one. Like, I, I just, like, just do stupid things sometimes. I say stupid things sometimes, right? And then if I really, if I really consider the way that I treat people, right? Sometimes I recognize that maybe I'm even more broken than that, right? Pride gets the best of me. I'm going to share a story in a minute where I had a very proud moment, right? Greed, wanting what others have. Jesus talks about murder, right? I've never murdered anybody, thank goodness. Uh, but Jesus takes it one step further and says that even if you have anger in your heart, if you get angry with somebody, it is like murder. Well, yep, 
Guilty as charged right there. Been angry with my wife, angry with my children. Again, these people that they should be the last ones that I'm having these feelings towards. And so it just helps me to recognize, and I want to kind of set the stage that there is a battle going on in all of us, that there is brokenness, that the enemy, that Satan is fighting for our hearts. But the good news is, so is Jesus. And so in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, it says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. So what we naturally want to do, right, what our bodies want to do, we're all the, the, those terrible things. But what the Holy Spirit wants to produce inside of us is this, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, faithfulness gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So when we experience this in somebody, these great things, it is the Holy Spirit, it is God working in them. It is not them themselves. If you have ever experienced anything like this from me, I pray that you recognize, and and I pray that for my kids too, that they see that, that my love can only come because of the Holy Spirit in me. Because me, Anthony, just the guy, just the guy that likes to play video games and hang out, right? I do not have those desires on my own. It is only because of the Holy Spirit producing that inside of me. So, so when we want to make relationships about us, the beautiful thing is that Jesus also wants to make it about us, right? That it, it isn't just this, like, I hope I go out today and I'm joyful. I hope I go out today and I... And I express more of a patient attitude. I hope that I love people better, right? We're not putting it in in our schedules. You know, we're not setting reminders. uh, Love at 1115. Got it. Patience at 1120, right? But some of us have made, you know, the, the church thing about coming on Sunday mornings and even about attending life groups, which is our, you know, our small groups that meet throughout the weeks, right? We, we check all these things off. We're trying to exhibit all these things, but it's the opposite of what God is wanting for us. He wants us to allow the Holy Spirit inside to produce those things naturally. So if you find yourself struggling like I do often, wrestling with right and wrong, loving and not loving, if you find yourself in that no that it is a good thing. It is a good thing that you are wrestling with that. That shows that the Holy Spirit is doing what he needs to do inside of you to produce the fruit that is going to show others that you care for them, that you love for them. Dads, that we, that we care for our children, that we want what is best for them. That struggle is a good thing, a very good thing. In Titus chapter 3, verse 5, this is another letter that, that Paul wrote. Um, to Titus, who was kind of overseeing and, and encouraging churches in a particular area, it says, He, as in Jesus, saved us not because of the good things we did, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins and gave us a new life through the Holy Spirit. He gave us a new life. Jesus' desire is to give us a new life, to give us the ability to love well to have joy, to have peace, to have patience, right? He wants to produce that in us because on our own, we cannot do it. We cannot do it on our own. And God knew that from the beginning when Adam and Eve were first created and they first sinned, it separated us from the love of the Father. It separated us from being in his presence, right? We were created in his image. But the moment sin entered the world, everything went haywire, Adam and Eve's children started killing each other, right? They started making these relationships about themselves. There was selfishness that took over. And ever since then, this is the battle that we are fighting. But God didn't leave us alone to do it. He sent Jesus to die on the cross, to live a perfect life, to die on the cross, and to be risen so that way we could have that ability to become back, to come back into the relationship with him that he has wanted from the beginning, and so, so as, as we recognize Jesus making it about us, um, I want to continue into Galatians 
chapter 5, verse 24 through 25, it says this, Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. So we are called to follow the Spirit's leading in every part of the lives and of our lives. And if I'm being very honest, right, I do not do that. And I haven't really come across many people uh, who do, but I have come across some who, who do a better job than I do. And, um, and, and as I think about this, since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Um, as I was praying about the message and sharing, a, a story came to mind, more of a person, a friend of mine. Um, he's sitting in here today, and uh, he approached me a few months back. We met at the end of last year and kind of hit it off and have been hanging out. We've run a Spartan race together, and, um, and I've just enjoyed uh, kind of sharing life with him. We play golf. He's better than me. Um, I'll just go ahead and throw you know, that out there. Um, I know it. Yep. I see you. I see you. And, uh, <clears throat> but something that he did um, like, inspired me in a way because I think about like, what do we do? So if, we, if our natural tendency is to not do the right thing, like, like what, what do we do? Okay, and first, we need to invite Jesus into our hearts. Like, we, we need to start there, but, but Jesus doesn't make us just do this on our own. He puts people in our lives, and so um, what my friend did is he recognized that there were some things in my life, uh, and I'll get to here in a second, but there are some things in my life as a, as a father as a husband, as a leader, and he said, hey, can, can we have coffee together? Can we just meet weekly? Like, I see these things in you, uh, and then that, that was the moment that, remember back that first point in relationships, we make them about us, right? He sees these, and I'm like, oh yeah, I would love to have coffee and tell you about how I do all the things. And so as that, that first, you know, coffee we had, and as we're, we're talking, I start to realize, like, this pride thing is rising up in me, right? That, that I'm making this about me. And I think about that with my children too, right? These first disciples that I, that I am calling to make, right? There's a pride thing that rises up inside of me. But what, what I want for, for my buddy Austin to see and what I want for my children to see and what I want for the students in our youth ministry to see is not just how much Pastor Anthony or not just how much Anthony cares for them, but how much our Father in heaven, how much Jesus cares for them. That is my call. That is our call. As Pastor Josh said, as we're moving out on this mission, the mission is not moving the mission of Church on the Rock forward. Thankfully, we attend a church and we are members of a church. We are a church family that is aligned with the mission of God. That is what we are doing. And so as we've met together, really what, what he did when he asked me, hey, can I have coffee? I see something in you. That, that I want to better myself in and learn and grow in, what it did for me is I said, you know what? I need to be doing that better. I need to be surrounding myself with people who are a step ahead of me or many steps ahead of me. In the Old Testament, they talk about the ancient paths, right? People have experienced God and they've followed God and, and they've done things well because they've been in a right relationship with them. And I recognize that for myself. Like, man, the moment that pride rose up, I'm like, Phew. I need to spend some time with some people that can help take me down a lot of notches. And so I thanked him for that, but it helped me remember that, that I had this responsibility as a father to my children, right? That those of us here in this room, that we have a responsibility to each other. We're called to make disciples. We're, we're called to go out. And so the, the beautiful thing here <clears throat> that these relationships that we have, that, that we are so broken and torn, like we make them about ourselves. But then we said, Jesus comes in and, and he makes it about us. He came to rescue us. And, and even further than that, God, our father, in his mind, it's always been about us. From the beginning, it's the reason that we were created is because he wanted to have a right relationship with us. He wanted to create us to have right relationships with each other. But it was broken and he could have, you know, when Adam and Eve ate the fruit, when they sinned, when they broke that initially, he could have just scrapped the whole thing and said, you know what, all right, back to the drawing board, let's start over. But he didn't. He didn't. He said, no, we're 
gonna, we're gonna go exactly the way we're going and I'm, I'm gonna rescue their hearts. And so uh, today, uh, when I was meeting with Aaron, our, our worship leader, um, he, you know, we were talking about songs and that song, Reckless Love, is one that um, my kids and I, we, we sang together a lot and uh, they're a lot smarter than me. And so I remember one time, I think we were driving down the road, it was probably my daughter, um, she asked that, like, isn't reckless a bad thing? Like, to be reckless, isn't that bad? And I'm like, yeah, well, hmm. And then I got a little stump, like, okay, how, how do I uh, respond to this? And um, I was fortunate enough the other day to come across um, a YouTube video of this song, Reckless Love, being played. And, and in the middle of this live thing, Corey Asbury, who wrote the song, he shares his heart, and he shares really the heart of God and, and where he came up with that the title "Reckless Love" and, and what it means. So I just want to I want to share this I want to share this with you. He said, "So when I use the phrase the reckless love of God, when we say it, we're not saying that God Himself is reckless. He's not crazy. We are, however, saying that the way He loves is, in many regards, quite so. What I mean is this: He's utterly unconcerned with the consequences of His actions." with regard to his own safety, comfort, and well-being. His love isn't crafty or slick. It's not cunning or shrewd. In fact, all things considered, it's quite shocking, and might I even suggest sometimes downright ridiculous. His love bankrupted heaven for you, for me. His love doesn't consider himself first. It isn't selfish or self-serving. He doesn't wonder what he'll gain or lose by putting himself on the line. He simply puts himself out there on the off chance that you and I might look back at him and give him that love in return. His love leaves the 99 to find the one every time. To many practical adults, that's a foolish concept, but what if he loses the 99 in finding the one? What if finding that one lost sheep is and will always be supremely important? His love isn't cautious, It's a love that sent his own son to die a gruesome death on the cross. There's no plan B with the love of God. He gives his heart so completely, so preposterously, that if refused, we would think it irreparably broken. Yet he gives himself away again and again and again and again. Time and again. Make no mistake, our sin's new pain is hard. Seventy times seven is a lot of times to get your heart broken. And yet he... God our Father opens up and allows us back in every single time. His love saw you when you hated him and all logic said they'll reject me. He said, I don't care what it costs me. I lay my life on the line as long as I get their hearts. It's what God's been after our whole time. It is our heart. He's not looking at your church attendance on Sunday mornings. He's not making sure that because you're not comfortable because of COVID of coming into the building, are you logging on and making yourself known in the chat? That's not what God is looking for, right? He's not looking at how many times you told your wife you love her. He's not looking at how many times you told your husband you love him, your children, you love them. Right? Even those things, there's, there's no list, even no matter how great we make it sound, there is no list that God is after. What he is after is, are they willing to just give me their heart and let me change them from the inside out, and then I will produce these things in them, the fruit of the Spirit. Let me do the hard work. God has been wanting to do that the whole time. Here in Ezekiel, Chapter 36, verse 24 through 27. So Ezekiel was a prophet from the Old Testament, and so he's he's speaking the words of God. For I will gather you up from all the nations and bring you home again to your land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. Your filth will be washed away, and you will no longer worship idols. And I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. And I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. So we may try because of our brokenness to make relationships about ourselves, but the beauty is that Jesus came to change that. 
to give us the ability to make it about other people. And the great thing is here, God, since the beginning, has been after our hearts. It's what he wants most. He wants us to live a good life. He wants us to be with him for eternity. And it starts with us inviting him in. So there may be people here who who have never started that relationship with Jesus, that the struggle is very real, that your flesh takes over most of the time. Nine times out of the ten, you fail, you falter, you haven't begun that relationship. But just because you haven't said the words, just because you haven't started that relationship does not mean that God has not been after your heart. It's nothing new for people to turn their backs on God. It's nothing new for people to deny that he exists. This has been going on since the beginning of time, right? Thousands of years, we get, we get stories in the Bible, right? God's chosen people, his own chosen people that he did miracles for, bringing them into promised lands and, and feeding them out of thin air, giving them water, right? Those people, seeing these miracles happen, still turn their back on God, still go away. And yet he still sent Jesus for you and for me and for you at home. He's still after our hearts. I love Corey Asbury's words, right? doesn't matter how many times that we, that we fail, that we, that we turn our back on him, that we don't love our wives, our children, our husbands. Well, it doesn't matter how many times he still wants what is better for us. Right? I have a glimpse of what that looks like with my own children. I always want what's best for them, but I can't offer it on my own. The best thing I can do, dads, the best thing we can do for our children, those of you listening at home, is offer them the love of Jesus, to bring them into that relationship. And so here at Church on the Rock, we end all of our services every single time. Right? None of this makes, could, may make any sense at all without a relationship with Jesus. We can't do these things without a relationship with Jesus. So with every head bowed and eyes closed, and you can join us at home too, I want to give you an opportunity that if you have not started that relationship, if, if that battle you are fighting inside of you is too much for you because you are not allowing the Holy Spirit to do his powerful work inside of you, I want to give you a chance now to, to say a prayer, maybe for the first time or maybe for the 20th time, the 100th time, to invite Jesus into the battle that we're fighting because we are all called to move out on mission and to serve others, to love others well as, as we would love ourselves, the Bible says. So I'm going to say a prayer here just in a second, and I'm going to ask everybody in the room and those at home, just say it out loud with me. For the person who might be saying it for the first time, we do that just to make them feel comfortable and to let you know that, that we are in this together, that we love you, that we're in this together. So we say, dear Jesus, I give you my life, all of it. Come into my heart, wash me, cleanse me, make me new. All that I am is yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Church, we love you. Happy Father's Day. Amen, 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 amen. Can we give God a bit of hand clap praise? Come on. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Pastor Anthony. Way to go. Way to go. Well, guys, this is the part of the service where, honestly, we've done everything for. Meaning, we park cars for this moment. We open up doors for this moment. We provide face masks and hand sanitizer and, and space out chairs for this moment. We have an online service for this moment. And it's really to give those who God has spoken to a chance to respond. It's that simple. So it's actually okay because we're, we're doing touchless. We don't have uh, in-person connection cards to pull out your cell phones. And you can go to churchontherock.net backslash connect. And you'll scroll down. There's a section where it says digital connection card. And on that digital connection card, there are actually three things I'd love to draw your attention to. The first says that I'd like to, I've made a decision to commit my life to Christ for the first time. And if that's you, just check that box. The second box says that I'd like to renew my commitment to Christ. And if that's you, please check that box. And then the third says, I'd like to be baptized. And if that's you, or you, or you, please check that box and let us know. 
We're also a church that believes in the full power of prayer. And so on that digital connection card is a box that says prayer request. And we would love to pray for you throughout the week. In fact, we have a prayer team that prays for you and your prayer request throughout the week. And our staff prays for that as well. So please know that we believe in the mighty power of prayer. And don't give us the opportunity to pray for you. I'll say it that way. Please give us the opportunity to pray for you. Well, guys, this is also another portion of the service where I love because we actually get to honor God with our giving. And I like to start off by saying this way. Look, if you are a guest, if you are a visitor, please know that this portion of the service is not for you. It just isn't. It's really for those that call church and rock home. And so, guys, you are an extremely generous church anyway. But I just want to make sure I tell you the three ways to give. Uh, well, really, now that we're in service, I have to add that one, too. Uh, but, but for those who are in the room, there are giving boxes on the back where you could walk down the aisle and, and place those, your giving in the, in the boxes. There's also uh, giving it online. So it's churchandrock.net backslash giving. And then there's giving by text. You can text C-O-T-R to 77977. And then lastly, a lot of you guys can mail in your tithes and offerings to 2995 Verla Avenue. But again, church, you're an extremely generous church, just extremely generous. So thank you guys for your generosity. You make a huge, huge difference in our city every week. You really do. Well, guys, a lot of you also been asking, how can I get plugged in? The beautiful things that we've actually held all access all three Sundays of this month. So every first Sunday is what we call Step One Connect Class, and that's where you get to join the church. So we have people join the church. Even we did that digitally uh, during during the COVID, and so people would get online and do a Zoom. Pastor Anthony would host that. Step two, which happens every second Sunday of the month, is called Discovery Workshop, and that's where you get to learn about you. You get to learn about your gifts and your passion, how God created you. And then step three is called Join a Team. That's happening today at 1230 in about 25 minutes right here in the auditorium. Lunch is provided. So if you're hungry and you want to join a team, hang out with us. We'd love for you to join us. If you're at home, swing on through. We'd love for you to join us. Do know that we're doing this for you. And do know that, again, guys, you guys serve extremely well. Can we give it up, by the way, for those? I see them in these shirts, our parkers and our greeters. Can we just give it up for them? I mean, truly, truly, truly. For our production team, for our worship team. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We would not be able to host these services in person and online without you. So thank you, guys, for what you're doing. Well, guys, let's close out. Can you mind standing to your feet as we close on out? What a great day it's been. What a great God we serve. And I'm going to tell you, I just love looking around the room because it's good to see you. We missed you. It's really, really good to see you. It really is. So thank you guys for being able to come, for those who are able to come, for coming. And for those who are able to watch, for watching. We love you. We're grateful that you're here. Let's pray on out. Father God, thank you so much for who you are and for what you do. Thank you for being our good, good father. God, I thank you, God, for those whose lives have changed today from the message that Pastor Anthony gave, Lord Jesus. You did it for us. You had us on your mind. And we thank you for that, God. God, be with us as we continue, God, to be your children throughout the week. This is Father's Day, and you're our good, good father. That is who you are. Thank you for loving us. Jesus, be a fence all around us every day. Jesus, we want you to protect us as we travel along the way. I know that you can. And I know that you will fight our battles if we just be still. Lord, please be a fence all around us every day. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and deliver you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be all glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And together we all said it loud. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, tell somebody that you love them and keep looking up.